Hi everyone and welcome to another video. So you'll be able to tell obviously from the title this one's going to be uh, retrofitting full BMW OEM iDrive system to an E89. Okay so a little bit of history first of all I basically brought this car with a very very basic standard uh, sound system no iDrive and the sound wasn't the best. Uh, I managed to upgrade it to a better system with the built-in uh, Bluetooth and the USB control on it and that improved the sound no end Then I added the as you've seen in the previous video I added the Android system to it and that improved it a lot a lot more usability out of that That has now been sold and it's been fitted to another member's car Because I always wanted iDrive um, Unfortunately it's something I missed out of when I brought the car and I really wish I had gone with it but I found a way of uh, retrofitting it without too much of a problem and this is what I'm about to show you in this video okay so this video has been filmed over a long time I first started about it's to be fair it's probably about a year ago now and I started uh, getting bits and bobs together ready for it uh, the actual installation was done last July uh, that's July 2020 it's now May 2021 so the system's been in and running and I'm very very happy with it. Of course you'll have also seen I did the other video for the MMI box installation which was on my iDrive system. Um, it is a full iDrive now. Um, the system I've got I've retrofitted a com box to it as well. Um, but for the sake of this video I'm not going to go into the com box side of it. I'm going to take the assumption that you already have Bluetooth of some sort already fitted to your car um, simply because it's a lot more complicated well sort of complicated uh, there's a lot more involved uh, in other stuff uh, you've got to fit a lot more kit to it so what we'll do here is like I say we'll assume you've already got Bluetooth on your car and you're changing then from the standard radio to the iDrive which is the controller the head unit, the screen, etc. So we'll show you that, show you all the parts you need, um, show you then how to install it, and then a little bit of simple standard coding at the very end of the video. So, let's get on with it. Okay, so to start off with, we require the head unit. Now this is the uh, 3 series version, the E9X, uh, with a short neck and this is the E89 with a longer neck so you can't mix the two up, it's got to be an E89 one. You'll need a screen and the uh, front surround bezel for the radio. You'll also need the specific uh, cage for the iDrive one. As you see here, it's all squared off, nothing juts out into it, whereas on the old one, the bottom left there, you've got a piece that juts in and it's offset to the left hand side. You'll also need an LVDS cable, this goes from the head unit to the screen, and a controller as well. Now you can buy the uh, 3 series, 1 series controllers, look similar to this. Uh, you just take off the um, surround bracket and then it'll end up looking like that. There's the part number 51169154065 and you buy that looking like that. It's about £16, £18 here in the UK. Okay, so what you now also need is a glove box USB port. You can buy the cheap ones. This is one from AliExpress. Uh, you need to do a little mod, I'll mention that later on. Um, but they work out a lot cheaper than buying a genuine one. You'll also need two four pin plugs. Uh, probably best to get ones with tails already uh, connected, but you can get them uh, as a self crimping kit as well. Okay, with mine I went for an emulator. This uh, allows you to activate the navigation on, on the head unit. It's a good way of doing it. It can be coded. I mean, you can code it uh, to work with navigation or you can uh, fit an emulator. So here we go. This is a one. It's got a male quad lock connector one end and a female quad lock connector the other. This is the emulator box. And then I decided to tag my uh, 
two control cables onto this loom to make it a little, little easier. Um, so basically what we've got is you've got your four pins uh, into your two plugs, one for the screen and one for the controller. They're both identical, so it doesn't matter which is which. And uh, nicely um, wrapped them as well. I can look a bit more how we am. Okay, so here's your diagram. You've got your power in, your negative out, your can high, and your can low. And that's on the screen, exactly the same on the controller. Power in, negative out, can high, and can low. Here we go, all nicely heat shrunk up. Okay, and you're gonna wire to the wires coming from the quad lock connector. Pin one on the plug goes to the wire from pin 15 on the quad lock connector. Pin two on the plug goes to the wire from pin 12, that's your negative. Pin three on the plug goes to the wire from pin 11 on the quad lock. And pin four on the plug goes to the wire from pin nine from the quad lock. And like I say, just cloth wrap them up, makes them look nice and neat. Okay, so onto the uh, the bunches so you can't mix them up. Your top two rows are generally power and control, and your bottom two rows are the speakers. Okay, so uh, we need to remove some trim first of all. You don't need to remove your ashtray in inserts, just I have some uh, fragrance stuff in there, so I always put it out of the way. Right, pull up your uh, gear gator for the manual. And then on the automatic style like this, again, also pull it, pull it up, and this will gain you access to the uh, connector, the ribbon cable connector on the other side. As you can see just here, a little bit closer to the shot. And uh, what we've got to do here, we've got two tabs, one on each end of the plug. To press those tabs in and pull the connector out okay on the older style there's no connector to actually disconnect here all you do is just yank straight up on the on the um, handle the same as the newer style pull the handle straight up to uh, release it okay so get your trim tool and pop in the side of the center console trim rising it up gently all the way around and you just pop up the clips on the inside it is quite tight well it will be tight if yours has never been out before mine's been out quite a few times now so uh, it's going to be looser so what we're going to do now because of course with the automatic you've removed the, the gear gator on the newer style and uh, in fact you can remove it on the older style as well uh, but on the manual just pop it back through the hole putting the gear back into fourth and just feed it through to uh, lift up your center console panel. Okay, so we need to disconnect some uh, connections under here. There's your DSC one, first of all. All you do is just pull that basically backwards. And then you've got your handbrake connector, two pins, one either end of a plug, just pop them in and then pull it out, just like that. Press in and pull out. Okay, your ashtray one, that's a Molex connector. Again, you've got two tabs on that. Press either side and part the plug. And on your front switches, you've got uh, a little tab underneath from this point. There we go, that's the one just there. Press it inwards and pull it out. These are very, very tight. Okay, put your trim over to one side, nice and safely. Okay, so we best uh, fit the iDrive controller at this point. Put your center console panel on the bench and remove the four screws from the oddment tray putting them to one side safely right so if you've uh, brought them separately uh, get your frame and mount it onto your iDrive controller line it up so it's the right way around the bulge in the middle and in, in the correct place slightly offset fit it in from the front and then you've got four clips each side to clip it clip the frame to the controller Lift them in, nice and snug. And then just screw it back into the uh, center console trim. Okay. 
and that's it, all ready for connecting to the cable later. Okay, get a good quality trim tool, not one of these cheap plastic things like this, get a much better one. Um, and certainly don't do what I'm about to do here, which is shove a screwdriver in it, because that will damage the leather. Mine's damaged enough already, so it's not going to be much difference. Anyway, get your trim tool, ease it off. You've got four metal clips on it, I'll show you in just a second. Use your hands, pull it out, don't be scared. There you go, one, two, three, and four, and they plug into receivers in the bottom of the um, cage. Okay, T20 Torx bit. Uh, I like this little one because you, know, you can just change it for varying uh, lengths. Um, undo your two screws at the bottom of your radio head unit and gently ease it out. Right, on the back of it we've got the quad lock connector. Uh, if you've already got it, a USB connector. Then you've got an FM antenna. Pop that out like that and just pull it down. And if you've got it, the two DAB connectors as well. Again, put the radio to one side. Right, now for some more trim removal. Okay, so underneath where the radio was, you've got two uh, screws here. Sorry about the quality of this video. Um, right, so you've got one there and one where I've actually got one missing. I must put another screw back in there. Okay, so again, they're T20s. Take them out, put them in a safe place. Now, underneath the, in the glove box area, you remove all the screws in the top. Every one of them. And again, put them to one side. On the end panel, pull down your rubber seal. And then with a trim tool, pop open the uh, end panel. Um, obviously, you'll have two hands. I'm doing this with a camera in one hand, so it's going to drop in just a second. Don't let it drop because you've got the switch connectors for the um, turn off the airbag on the passenger side and you don't really want it falling on that. Okay, there's the extra screw in the end there. Inside the glove box you've got one hiding there. You've got one underneath that panel there as well and to access that you take off the three screws from the foot kick plate, remove that trim and then you can gain access to it from there. If you don't remove that hidden screw, you will have trouble getting the glove box off. In fact, you'll probably end up what I've actually done and then snap it. Okay, so ease your glove box down. And you'll see on mine here, what you're about to see on mine, I've got something that you won't have, and that is a MULF connected to the top of my glove box. Your MULF or COM box will be in the boot. It'll be hidden in the boot, but it'll be in the boot if you've got them. Um, oh yeah, I always recommend remove the um, glove box light plug and then just ease off your dash trim. Uh, yeah, with a MOF, so it won't be there, it, it, it'll be in the boot. So uh, I've put it there because it's easier than running a load, a load of long cables because I'm retrofitting the, uh, the MOF. I've actually now changed it, it's now actually a com box as well, but that's beside the point. Okay, ease off your console. Okay, as you can see, we have one, two connectors and the stop start button ribbon connector. Okay, get a small prodder, press it in there, normally about 200, and there we go, it pops it, pull it down, and it disconnects the plug. Then we white one, there again, new prodder, press down and release the grey catch. Turn it round. Oops, that's it. And out it comes. Okay. Now you've got your ribbon connector to move. Nothing fancy here. I'm trying to move my camera around a little bit. There we go. I already released this slightly anyway. Press on your two sides, that on there, that on that side. Press together and pull it out. Support your centre console trim panel if you don't want it dropping on the floor. 
Right, so we've got some access all the screws here on the trim panel. Remove all those screws. Also down the side, that's actually my glove box hidden screw. As you can see, I snapped that off, so that will already be gone. So remove those, put them to one side, and then gently remove your lever panel. And again, put it to one side, nice and safely. Like I say, I'll keep using a screwdriver. Well, I don't now, actually. I now use a, a decent quality um, trim tool to remove mine, but I did use a screwdriver and it is damaged. Right, on the driver's side now, again, remove the um, rubber seal to gain access to the end panel. Better quality trim tool, as you can see here. Pop that one off. And then your uh, light control panel just pulls out which gains access to the uh, to the plug coupler on that one. And again, pop that one off. All the way down. And pull it out. And again, put that panel to one side. This now gains you two more screws. Again, remove those. And then the ones underneath on the kick panel, you've got three more there as well. Now those ones go into... Uh, here we go. These ones just there. Okay, one, two, and three. Now, removing this is a bit tricky because it's very tight. Uh, as you can see here, obviously I've sped this bit up. It took me a lot of time to get all this pack to get this pan actually out. You need it out because it's the bit that's where my hand is now. It's the bit there where you need to remove that to be able to get the new cage in. Okay, it also helps if you remove the uh, center console. Now this is pop up the back panel. That was already loose, so you can tell that. It's normally a bit tight about that. And in here, you've got two 10 millimeter nuts. See them just there. Remove those two 10 mil nuts. At the front, you've got two Torx 20 screws. And in the middle, you've got an Allen head. So remove all those. There you go, that's the second place, a two part Allen head. And that gains you uh, access to the center console. You can lift it and maneuver it around. You don't need to remove it completely, but you can maneuver it around a bit. Gives you a lot more um, scope to be able to get this uh, knee panel for the driver's side out. Okay, now for the cage. That's your new cage. And you got, so you've got two fixings on the top right, two fixings on the top left. And uh, you've also got fixings at the back here, which is those ones that side, and then above that, you've also got two more ones there, and then one, of course, on the other side as well. So that's four at the back, two at the top. Okay, now for the fun bit, trying to get it out. This actually took quite a long time. This is a lot of sped up film. Right, you've got another screw up there, which I noticed. But it doesn't really hold anything, but it gives you a bit more play on the front of a panel when you want to maneuver it. By the way, if you do have a screen already fitted, never pick it up by that. Never lift it up manually. Okay, so remove your two um, connectors for the uh, hazard and uh, lock buttons. and put your air vents to one side. Okay. 
Again, this is why I suggest removing all the screws for the centre console. You move it all, all the way back, as far back as you can get it, because you really do need access to this. Because what we're going to do, we're going to twist it backwards. And, uh, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot that. I've got a couple of uh, cables, uh, cable clips there as well, which I just popped out of a screwdriver. You can pop them back in when you put it all back together. So this is it. So we're going to twist it sideways. Now, I spent a lot of time work, trying to work out the best way to get this out. I'm going to try to if, see if I can get it sideways towards the glove box. But no, that really didn't work. I even moved, removed a, another metal panel, which um, a, a metal bracing rather. Um, just decided that wasn't a good idea. Um, so in the end, you just push all your wires out the back. And you've got no choice but to... Um, or basically just put it out the front. It's the only way to get this out. As you can see the amount of struggling I'm having here. This is not an easy job, I can actually assure you. The best way of course is to take the entire dash out. Well, you don't really want to be doing that. This is me now taking the metal bracket out when I'm thinking, oh yeah, we'll go out sideways. Nah, that didn't work. Here we go. This is the final bit now. The dash does bend quite well, actually. I mean, it looks like you, you know, you're going to damage it, but you're not. It, 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 it bent very well, it allowed me to do all this. Put the new one back in, and it's absolutely perfect. Let's see what I mean now. This is it. You're going to pull the uh, center console back as far, center console back as far as you possibly can, and just ease the old bracket out. Here we go, and that's it. It's now out of the way. So, your new bracket. Right, Check, take stock here. Um, make sure all your wires are in the right places. Make sure you're not gonna trap anything. Obviously, you've got your cables um, for your uh, air, con air con controls at the top, and you've got all your wires for your all your wires for your um, head unit. Now, this is my emulator um, cable with the two cables coming off it, one for the uh, power and CAN bus to the screen and one for power and CAN bus to the iDrive controller. You don't have to do it this way. You, you can just connect your power and CAN bus cables straight into the um, into wiring loop uh, using the same information I gave you earlier on. In fact, I'm going to do that in the future because I'm actually going to change the emulator out. But that's another story. We'll come back to that one later. Now, don't forget to swap over your um, MOST connector here. So it just there's a little clip. It just pops it out and then feed it straight back in. Same way around into the same port on the new. Uh, end of the emulator cable. And start tucking your wires back a little bit so you, so you don't want too much in the, in the way when you're doing the next bit. Okay, so time to run your um, power and, uh, and uh, canvas lines to the screen. I made this far too long. I reckon about 50 centimeters will be max on there that you need. I think I've doubled that. While you're at it, you might as well run your LVDS cable. Now, this is handed. I will come to that in a few minutes. But it only goes one way around. I didn't realise that when I put it in. I do have to take it out again later on. Right, now for your CAN bus and power line back to your um, iDrive controller. Feed it underneath everything and then run it to the back. Just take stock of your cables. Make sure where they all are, so you can have various ones there. Right, so we're down to the um, screen. Now what you'll have done here, you'll have taken out your oddment tray at the top. I know I had a screen in there earlier on, that's because I was test fitting stuff before this, I made the video. 
Um, so there's four screws, uh, two at the front behind the air vent and two at the back underneath the um, grill for the speaker. Uh, and it's exactly the same for the screen, same, same positions. Like I say, don't do that. Do not open the screen fully. You can open it a little bit to get to the screws, but don't open it fully by hand. It can offset the, um, the motor and the, and the uh, settings inside the screen. Um, if you do have to do it though, the chances are, give it 24 hours with a car sat down, doing nothing, everything switched off, and hopefully it should reset itself if you do get a problem with that. Right, now for putting the radio cage in. Again, reverse way of uh, how I took it out, feed it through the plastic, and obviously, remember, don't trap any wires, start feeding your wires back through as well. Watch out for your aircon controls at the top. And of course, the um, door locks and uh, hazard switch lighting at the top as well. So I say, feed it in, keep, keep pulling it in nice and gently and feeding your wires through until it's in the correct position with your screw holes. Your best way of telling if it's in the right position is you've got your four screw holes at the top all, all lined up. And of course, then your tabs for your four screws at the back are flat up against the metal. So once it's in position, screw it in place. So you've got your four top ones. Don't forget your extra one you took out if you did actually take it out. Okay, so you can start uh, checking on your wires, make sure nothing's been snagged or trapped at the back at all. Make sure all nice and free. Uh, you can put your air vent back in at this point. You don't. You don't really. Uh, you don't need that out anymore. You've screwed in your screen at the top. So uh, because the front edge of the vent actually covers the two screw holes, the two front screw holes, so to, to the screen, so you won't be able to get to that again. So, but that's in now. So that, that's fastened in. You've got your electrical wire. Uh, for the screen there, you've got your LVDS cable for the screen. You can see I've just popped the, popped the screen up there just that little bit. That's okay. Shouldn't be a problem with that. Feed it, feed your um, air vents in, put your two screws back in. Obviously making sure again that your uh, air con control cables are both free there. Check everything at the back. So you want your Uh, you want your glove box USB port cable. You want your FM aerial cable and your DABs if you use it. Um, and you want your LVDS. And of course you want your quad lock connector uh, from the emulator. Okay, so we've fastened a few things in there so we can actually put the uh, center console back in where it belongs. Again, you've got your two 10 millimeter nuts at the back, your two T20 Torx at the front, and of course your Allen head double-headed bolt in the middle. You've got your side trim, you can put that back on, that's finished with now. Be careful, of course, because there are a lot of sharp edges around. Um, you don't want to catch any of the leather trims on this. Okay, let's go for a test, uh, test run of a system, make sure everything's actually working. So, you want your FM aerial, your GPS, your LVDS, glove box USB, and the uh, quad lock main connector. Pop them all in. If you're manual, your gear stick does get it. You can actually remove the gear knob if you want to. It does apparently yank straight upwards. I've never done that to mine, but apparently it does work. Um, right, to do a test uh, fitting, you do need to uh, have your um, key um, connector enabled. So just plug that back in. 
Uh, it's a two-part ribbon on that one. One goes to the key and one goes to the start-stop switch. Now I did actually also plug in the start-stop switch on this, but I didn't really need to. But I'll just play and safe. I don't know whether it really makes a difference or if you've not got it in or not. Again, like I say, try not to mess with the screen at all. So put your key in. I realised at this point I hadn't actually connected the um, the iDrive controller. So I quickly plugged that back in. Just put the um, centre console trim loosely in place. So plugged the key in and voila, it worked. Absolutely flawlessly. No problems whatsoever. Oh, you see. Just test your control. Make sure everything's working because although it comes on, the controller might not be working. The control might be a problem with your line on there. So just check everything out. Um, obviously, check that things work. Volume levels can be altered. Just basically check everything. At this point that did not connect to the phone and there's a reason for that and that's because the MOLF wasn't working properly as far as the phone's concerned. It was working for the USB and the AUX connections, they were, they were working absolutely fine but for some reason the Bluetooth on the MOLF didn't and this actually stopped me for a long time getting that working. I've now got it working and that will be in a future video but like I said at the start of this video this is assuming you already have a MOLF or com box fitted and working properly okay so that's your test it's working excellent that is a major step in the right direction so again just remove your trim safely over to one side where you finish off this so you don't really don't want your trim in the way while we're messing around with stuff um, now what I didn't mention earlier on and I haven't shown you this either is I've used one of the aftermarket um, GPS adapters, antennas. Um, and I've, because I don't have a centre speaker at the top, I've stuck mine to the plastic tray on top there and run the cable down the back. Uh, I ran it down at the same time as I ran the uh, LVDS cable and the uh, power and canvas lines for the screen. And it just runs straight down and plugs straight in the back of your uh, head unit. So that's where that's come from, and that's why the uh, that's another reason why the uh, speaker grill was off. But also, obviously, that's off because you need to gain access to the two screws at the back. Right. So we're now putting trim back. Uh, the driver's side knee panel first of all, the really tricky one. Uh, don't forget to feed your uh, start-stop um, connector through. Okay. So you got your centre console panel. Plug all your wires back in where they came from. And put that back into place. Right now, the light panel on the door side. Plug your plug connector in. Press it in. Clip it on, and then this one just clips in. There's no screws holding this one in, so that just clips in there. And that's it. Not forgetting, of course, your end trim. Again. Three clips on that one as well. Put them in place, there you go, just like that. Line them up and press them in. And then you've got your rubber door seal to go back on. Line it up with the uh, metal of the door frame and just push it in. And that's that trim finished. Okay, so the glove box USB. These are the type, you can get them on eBay, and that's where they go. Now, if you're buying one of the cheap kits from abroad, you'll end up with one of these green um, connectors. Now, they don't work properly. 
So that's the way it would normally go with a little clip against the clip bit. I know this is a uh, centre console one. Uh, don't worry about that. Okay, so I've actually clip at the top there. What we need to do now is we need to remove the clip at the top with a, with a knife. Slice it across there. Just like that. Now, so again, bringing back in my trusty uh, little centre console um, socket, which is exactly the same fitting as a glove box one. So it normally go that way. What we're going to do, we're going to turn it 180 degrees. So it goes that way instead. Now, if you have a genuine cable, don't worry about it. Put it in the proper way around. So if the genuine one, put it in as it's designed to be in the first place. But for one of these cheap ones off eBay or AliExpress or wherever, it needs to be turned 180 degrees. The head unit end goes in the proper way. The glove box end, just turn it around 180 degrees. Right, time to put the glove box back now. Put your screws back in for that. Don't forget your end trim. That's that all in, and that's that. Don't forget your uh, kick strip for the uh, driver's side, and of course, don't forget your kick strip for the passenger side if you remove that. Okay. Always protect your centre console trim when you're taking the radio in and out. I'm sorry, I apologise for this, but this is a reversal of the film I did earlier when I took this off. And this is from my previous video um, when I did the uh, Android screen. Uh, so I saw that, I completely forgot to film this bit, so uh, I've had to do it this way. So plug in your stop stop switch, and then you've got your other two connectors as well. Just plug them straight back in as it were push them in, clip them up, you don't need to press anything this time, so you just make sure that clips all the way up, same with your big black connector as well, push it down and it clips up and just clip it into place, make sure you've got a good click there, and then it's time to put your panel back on, again this clips into place, don't forget your air vent, Clip it in, you may have to push it in a little bit. Now what you've got to do here, to make sure it fits properly, is you've got to shove this extra cable for, with the emulator. There's a gap at the back and you basically just push it down there as best as you can. Line it up and push it back. This takes quite a bit of doing. Um, it's worse if you've got an MMI box fitted, but that's another story entirely. So once it's all back in nice and neat, screw up your four screws and just give another test because you've been messing around with cables again. Give it one more test, just make sure it's actually working. Give it a quick flick around because you've put everything back together since you uh, tested it previously. You don't want to have knocked a cable when you've put everything back in and, and have to take everything back out again. Right, now you've got your front trim panel for the uh, new head unit, which is different to the old one. Again, you've got your four metal clips. Line them up. You may have to adjust the trim fascia just a little bit. It does move around a bit. It's not too bad. It's okay. Uh, push it in and um, clip it all in place. And that's it. Once you've put your uh, dash trim in, don't forget, of course, you've got your extra screws above the glove box here to screw into that. Just hold it in place. And again... One last thing, just make sure everything is actually still working. I like to test it, I just like to see the screen go up and down half a dozen times. Um, now, if you brought, a, obviously you're going to buy a second hand unit anyway, so the chances are it may not need coding. Now, it, depending what was fitted to the car it came with and depending what your car has, it may or may not need coding. Okay, so open NCS Expert, go up to File, Load Profile, 
and we want expert modus. F1 start, F3 chassis, click down to E89, highlight that, click OK, click OK again, and wait for your VIN number etc to pop up. Then over to F6 back, F4 process ECU, on to combi, click OK, and then down to F4 read ECU. Wait for that to pop up and close it. We don't need this, this is to put a file into the work folder. So we're going to minimize NCS Expert and go to your work folder. Now, if you don't have a shortcut like I've got, this is where you'll find it local disk, NCS Expert, and work. I just happen to have a, work, a shortcut for work folder on my desktop. But that's how you can find it. Anyway, inside the work folder, find the fsw underscore psw dot trc folder file, sorry, click right click on that, down to rename delete dot trc, or rather delete trc, and then replace it with man in capitals, uppercase, click uh, click return, click OK, and you're done. We don't need that now, that's just fair so everything works properly. Okay, back on to NCS Expert, load profile, and manipulation is what we want. Click OK, down to start, F1, across to F2, edit VO, highlight E89, click OK, click OK with your VIN number, and then we want to be putting in our new bits for the iDrive, which is 609 and 6VA. Okay, so first of all, American dollar symbol and 609, and click add, and then take off the 09 and put on VA. For some reason I did VC when I did this uh, video bit, but there you go. Click OK, uh, make sure VA and 609 have gone in there. Back to F6, click back, and then across to F4, process ECU. You know, you've got a CAS, highlight it, click OK. Down to F2, change job, and we want FA underscore right. Highlight that, click OK, make sure it's in there with CAS as well, and then F3, execute job. Click on that, you'll get coding active, followed by coding complete. That goes uh, just a bit. I'm not gonna do it, because I've already got these in mine already. So that's done. Once you've done that one, go down to F1, change ECU, find NFRM, highlight, click OK, You've still got FA right written there with NFRM down to F3, execute job, and again you get coding active and coding complete. Once that's done, down to F1 again, change ECU, go to CIC, click OK, then down to F2, change job, and you want SG underscore coherent, click OK. And then make sure that's in there, CIC, SU code here, and down to F3, execute job, click on that, coding active, and coding complete. And that is it. Your new CIC is now fully coded. Right, well, um, thank you very much for still being here. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope it's given you food for thought on uh, installing the iDrive system. Um, like I said at the start of this video, I started this all off uh, last year, about a year ago now. So I've been running with my iDrive for a good 10 months now. And I absolutely love it. Um, obviously adding the com box into it later on was even better. It's improved it a lot. And obviously the MMI box as well is, is brings everything up, up to date. So, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something and uh, we'll see you again next time. Thank you very much.